Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, from God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Amen. I can't stand when it does that. Good morning. Good morning. I am so excited because guess what? I have a special guest. That's right. John Natale. <clears throat> hey, John, how are you? Good morning, man. I love the introduction to that. Of the, of the video it's some of my favorite movies there <laughs> right i mean they did a really good job i mean they did a great job man. Kinda, you got a Leonidas. yeah i know like we are just kind of using some people's amazing talents um just to get people fired up so how are you doing lots going um, on in the news just saying well there's a lot going on i reposted a word yesterday from june that kind of tells you what what was coming and that was the first mm -hmm. domino piece so um <laughs> of what we heard about who is resigning at the end of the year so mm -hmm. yeah a lot we of did. things going on so that word was released on uh on june 29th right well and, I, uh, that's your first domino piece well okay so this is yeah i don't i think it's gonna be sooner i'm just saying i think it's gonna be sooner i think uh I think that that's just a, let's prepare everybody for what's about to happen because we've been seeing dominoes falling. We've been seeing strongholds being brought down, right. you know, and there's, um, there is just a lot of stuff. There is just a lot of stuff that is happening that we're like, huh, you know, because God is speaking. God does nothing. It says in the in the scriptures, it says God does nothing unless he tells his servants, the prophets. And what the prophets do is they speak things out and they establish it. And sometimes if you have people who necessarily aren't prophets and are prophet lion, but they still have a power in their words. Not the I and, and this is like the the thing, it's like if we get enough people to come into agreement with the prophet liars. Things can be changed and established. I'm just saying. Isn't that right. is that true? Well, there's definitely words. There's power in your words. The Bible says there's power in your words. Mm -hmm. So if there's power in your words, that if you speak death over yourself or speak negative, every everything that gets put in the atmosphere, once you release it naturally, goes in the atmosphere. Then the enemy. That's when the enemy has access to it. Right. So if you're always speaking doom and gloom, you're yoking with the enemy because the Jesus doesn't speak doom. Jesus doesn't tell you, I don't see it in the Bible where Jesus ever told me or told anybody else, hey, listen, I just want to let you know that we have a horrible famine coming for the next several years, um, but you're going to be okay. I, you know, I don't find it. It's not in the Greek. It's not in the Hebrew. It's not in anything. So he never prophesied anything negative because he doesn't have anything negative as an attribute. Right. So, but I mean, okay. Go ahead. So there's there's a couple of things that you know when you when you first start to hear the lord you're not 100 percent sure what you're hearing and so you you take some stuff and you just kind of put it on the back shelf you know you don't really talk about it you don't really think about it but then when things start to show itself it's like oh wait a second hey 
that, you know, God spoke to me about this and God spoke to me about that, you know, right. and I think I go back because we are, we are living in a new Testament where, where many people have the gift of prophecy, not the mm -hmm. office of a prophet, but they have the gift of prophecy and people have forgotten because the, the prophetic movement is like, no, 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 listen to me. I got the be all end all instead of going into their secret place and going in here from the Lord exactly what what is going on, because we can hear all this stuff. And I'm not I'm not going to discount anybody's words. I'm not, I'm not doing that. But it's like when their word doesn't match up with what God is speaking to me, something is wrong. And so what do you do? How do you fix that? How do you determine this isn't this isn't what God is speaking to me? And if it's if somebody is wrong, how do I make sure that I'm not the one who's not hearing improperly? How do we go back and, and we work on because I always believe we work on self first. Because sometimes we don't want to, you know, like the Jack, Jack Nicholson, you can't handle the truth. You know, right. there are some people who truly can't handle the truth. And so, you know, they'll they'll temper things, dismiss things, and they'll they'll use their their imaginations to give other things. But then right. but then there is the true word of God. Right. And I think that this most significant, greatest key that you can that you have to carry is whether or not this is God or not is your confidence of how you're hearing God. Right. That's absolutely key. The enemy, I believe, you know, the word of God talks about the great deception. Oh. Okay. We are there. We are. I was talking about this yesterday with a friend and another pastor friend of mine. And I said, we are in the days of the great deception. And where is the great deception coming from? It's not coming from the world, the lost. It's coming from the church. See, the enemy uses the very things that is right in front of you to deceive you. Because when you, I've said this for years, Lisa, the body of Christ, it's not very hard to hear the voice of God when you know your father. When the, when the, when the church is literally speaking and declaring and releasing prophetically polar opposites somebody's wrong it's not some not we're all right the the lord can't be saying we're in a 10 year of, you're going to have natural famine right. and then the other side is you're going to have a 10 year of natural prosperity that is a right. discrepancy and a bipolar of the word of god come on and so it it cannot be okay i love this one when, you know, even of course of President Trump, he's gonna, he's absolutely covered by the Lord. He's protected. God's gonna use him in the next season. And then you have prophetic words coming. We have to pray for him. He's gonna, he's, the enemy's trying to get rid of him. Okay. Come on, man. Okay. <laughs> it, 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 come on. So obviously you, you line everything up with the word of God, but you have to be able to be confident in what you're hearing. Right. And that's the most important thing and not confident in what other people are hearing. Right. If you're okay. not confident in what you're hearing, then you're basically your, your spirituality is driving off of what other people are saying. Mm, and that's so, good. so my question is, if you are, for example, like yourself, you're a wife, you're a mom based on your, a, a woman being, you know, you married and a mother, you're, you're going to drive your family and what you're hearing from God, not what somebody else is. Mm. You're going to make executive decisions based for your children and for your husband and your husband for you based on what you both are hearing. Come on. Not what John Smith is hearing for you or Come on. how you raise your kids. You know, but so we would deflect that. We make it where, okay, God, what is this guy saying? Because you can go to all the major voices in this nation right now. Because if you go on social media, we have now the social media prophets that have not sacrificed to pay the price for anything. Uh, everybody's a social media prophet now. And that's the great deception. That's good. Because the enemy, what the enemy did was he, he created a platform for people to use social media now. And everybody's a, everybody's a, a, right. a prophet and everyone's speaking in this and this. And I'm like, 10 years ago, this didn't exist. No. Mm -mm. Five years ago, this didn't exist. Um, it, was, it was creeping it was in. getting there, but yeah, it all happened after Trump was not in office anymore. And, and mm. not in office. 
office anymore. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about that because as soon as that happened, you had voices that were coming out of the woodwork and, yes. and all of a sudden, I mean, out of the woodwork, like I never heard any of these people before, you know, and I, I want to say that I was like, and I was prophetically connected with people, but never, never heard of these names. And then as soon as everything went fluey, it's like all these names came out and now they are the names to know. And it's like, okay, let's go back to one thing. The, the truth Yes, God's going to talk about the times and the seasons that we're in, but every nothing is about fear because even with let the because I was talking about Jeremiah yesterday, even with Jeremiah, there were false prophets that were saying, "No, no, no, we're staying in Jerusalem." Yes, we're going to stay in Jerusalem, but the Lord was telling Jeremiah, true prophet of God, "No, you need to go into captivity into Babylon." He said, "Cuz that's where you're going to be protected and that's where I'm going to have you because I'm right. doing something." You know, everybody keeps saying, you know, behold, I do a new thing. And do you not perceive? I don't think they're perceiving it, John. I'm just saying, I really don't see them perceiving it. Because if it's right. new, it doesn't look like the old. Right. It can't have any resemblance of the past. No. We're, we're calling down the same things, the same terminology, the same lingo. And basically, you know, that's why a lot of people, Lisa, get frustrated with the whole scenario of what's going on with the church, because it's like, you, you saying the last same things for the last 20 years. Yeah, that nothing has changed. It's right. the same lingo. Right. And what are we really doing? And people right. get burnt. Yeah. You know, like I said, when you see people get frustrated and burnt and tired. Yep. And and they displace themselves from the church. It's not the people they're displacing themselves from. It's the it's the the uh what you're projecting people are getting tired of just this whole projection of come on man it's we've got a, this it's the same thing over and over and over again you're getting tired of it and you really want to see the manifestation of the sons of thunder the sons of god all right and something where that's actually proactive is something exact we can't just keep saying god's going to move god's going to bring revival and 20 years later it still hasn't happened another 20 years later it's not happening and right. we have to change our methodologies. Right. That I'm not here just to say and pray it's coming. Right. We've been doing it for years. There's right. ministries in the nation that have been praying 24 seven for the last 30 years. Right. Okay. That, and you know, God's going to shake this city. Well, God is shaking cities. Oh, you just yeah. don't see it. God's bringing this miraculous thing. Well, he is doing it. God's going to bring a revival. First of all, I don't see anywhere in the Bible where where there was all of a sudden, you know, we we we've read about it in the past, Jonathan Edwards, John Wesley, but these what did they do? They went. Yeah. There's not yeah. one great re revivalist from the past that was sitting home and waiting. John Wesley was on a he was called a circuit rider. He was on a horse riding throughout the region. John Jonathan Edwards was in Connecticut and New England and John Wesley and all these people, Amy Simple McPherson, A. E. Allen, but they were proactive. Right. Jesus was proactive. Yep. You know, yep. he wasn't, you know, you know where he created the most disturbances? Where? Outside in the marketplace. That's it. Okay. Where do we create the most disturbance? In churches. And yeah. we offend people for speaking the truth. Yeah. yeah. But we're 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 wanting God to, you know, you I must admit, we were talking this yesterday. Out of the entire country, an entire country and world, the only entity of faith that has so much to offer, that so much this and this and this, this entertainment, that entertainment, and this, you know, is the American church, the stereotypical American charismatic church, has so much, it's almost like, like literally. You just go in the AMC theater or flagship theaters and choosing a movie to watch because that's right. basically what it is. Right. And pe and you can see it. And I've been saying this for such a long time. And the younger generation has lost its, you know, the attraction there. They've lost. We've lost them. Right. From 30 down. We've lost them. Right. All you got to do is go on a circuit with me and, and the churches. And you'll see that the average age of a, the, the typical church is over 45, almost yeah. 50. Yep. So we've lost the entire younger generation because they want nothing to do with going to a building anymore. Nope. 
and, we, and you can see all these conferences, all these conferences, who do people go to? The people are over 40. Mm -hmm. It's true. And it, it's a fact. Yeah. You know, and we, we have to change the, 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 what we're releasing and we have to change. Okay. This isn't working. How do we attract them? How do we, how do we get even the people that are burnt? The, mm -hmm. the majority of people that are in the United States right now that are spirit filled, that have left churches is enormous, enormous mm -hmm. because they're so burnt and tired of um, just the, I've heard this a hundred thousand times and we're still talking about it and still not doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather be in the marketplace and I'd rather be in the, you know, like, like for say, I love to, I love ministering when, when I'm, when I'm in church and, the anointing's there. It's great. I'm speaking truth. I'm speaking what God wants me to do. But at the end of the day, I spend the majority of my time at the more marketplace. Come on. Um, simply because that's where I love being. That's where I love. Yeah. That's where I love seeing God move the most. Yeah. Um, because there's nothing like seeing and not there's nothing like seeing the presence of God affecting someone that doesn't know him. Changing the atmosphere or seeing somebody's lights turn on, man, when all of a sudden they were. They were in a dark place and they're in a, and they're in a light place now or seeing when, you know, when people are just let me I want to know more about your peace. I want to know more about your I want to know more about your joy. And I want jealous for what you have. Tell me what tell me what's on you um, that I don't have. And how can I get this? And most mm -hmm. of the time that doesn't really manifest, you know, yeah. in churches. But at the end of the day, I think what's really happened is um, we've spent an entire lifetime of of talking to the choir and telling Christians how to be better Christians. And that was, that's not the gospel. Nope. Um, so realistically, we, we, I think a lot of people are waking up and that can actually be a great deception as well. When the enemy has put such a focus on believers and such a push that we have to keep training believers to be believers. Okay. Your relationship with your husband or your relationship with your children is not strengthened by other people. It's a strengthened by the, what you put into it. That's right. And and the emphasis that you put on it. If you want to get to know your husband better when you're in a relationship or when you first get, when you connect, it's the time spent together alone, not in a corporate setting. That's right. So it requires a, a response. And that's what we see. But believers, we've spent so much time, time training up and teaching and spending so much time telling a believer how to be a better believer. <laughs> and that's not what Jesus did. Yeah. And we're, we wonder why we're still, we're still waiting for a move of God outside these walls and a move of God to take place in our nation. And like, oh, and, and like I said, I've been following, I've been serving the Lord for 45 years, mm -hmm. 45 years. And I'm going to be straight up with you and very transparent with you. I got absolutely burnt and fried of to church because I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I don't want to be just come to a building week after week after week, two times a week, maybe three times a week. And I'm doing nothing except listening to you telling me how to be a better person. But I already know how to be a better person. Mm -hmm. I, that's basic. The, my codependency has to be directly from me and God, me and Holy Spirit. But you've it's almost here's the great deception. Come on, God. Here's the great deception. When you in the Catholic Church, you go to a priest and you're in he's the middleman between you and God. The church, the, the apostle and the prophet right now, and the pastor and the leader and, and the teacher right now have done that very same thing. Where we become so codependent on who's saying this and who's saying that and what you're saying and what he's releasing. And, and I'm telling you right now, if I gotta hear any more people keep telling me how to love people and love people and love people and love people. You know, and love the, you know, love, the, you know, you got to go in. I, I know how to love people. It's there's a lot more than that. You know, a lot more than that. There's got to be a balance. But we stay in the we stay in that little zone that makes us that that's that we're identified with. And there's, there, you know, we go to the smorgasbord and there's 19 million items of food to eat from. And we stay in the same place over and over because that's my identity. That makes me happy. That makes me comfortable. That makes me content. That gives me peace. That's my comfort zone. I don't get ruffled. And you do nothing else except go to that same place and just go for the, 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 the low main over and over and over. And you don't try anything else. And you keep directing the people, well, this is really good. You got to try this. 
this is really good. You got to try this. This low main is really great. Just keep eating this and you'll be just fine. Keep eating it. You'll, you'll, you know, and, and I'm like, come on, guys. The enemy, I've been saying this for so long. Listen to this. If we stay in the same thing over and over and over and over again, he gets, it is so forecasted to the enemy. He knows every move. He knows exactly what you're going to do. He knows exactly what you're going to say because the language, the love language is all the same. And he's after, there's no threat to him whatsoever because he knows every pattern and every, he sees the entire blueprint of your DNA in Christ. So he has exactly, he knows exactly what to throw at you. So we're mm. trying to pick things up and get people, get a, a mindset of, you know what, God, we've got to get this, the, the church today codependent on Holy Spirit. Yeah. And yeah. not codependent on man and this guy and this guy. I'm yeah. not interested in listening. And I'm not interested in hearing every different terminology in the Bible and every, every Greek word. And I don't give a rip. I'm interested in Holy Spirit moving mightily in my state, in my city, in my community, in in the workplace, in my town, and that when I leave my house, I'm a light in Walmart, Exxon, Circle K, or the beach, and the presence of God is blasting whoever needs the blast, and I'm a light in a dark place, John 1, 5, instead of just being a, a greater light in a, in, a, in a church place. Come on. So it, it is, you know, and this is the preaching, the teaching that, that needs to be reevaluated right now in the body of Christ, instead of just bringing up this message of everything's great, everything's wonderful, let's just keep spending time together and over and over and we do nothing with the gospel except just preaching to the choir. I'm going to be honest with you, man, it's not working. And if you think it's working, um, that's your deception. But it's not because I've been doing this in the ministry now since I'm 19, on the road for 20 years. And and in churches all over the place and in many, many different movements, and it's not working. No. And I and I agree with that. Look, I think I think what what I'm what I'm seeing is that okay, so um being in a marketplace and starting in a marketplace, and that's kind right. of where my ministry was brought, I would get to encounter because it started at a cosmetic counter, I got to encounter women who who the Lord wanted to touch. At the right. cosmetic counter, and I, I saw healings. I got deliverance. I mean, I saw all this stuff. Open heaven. It was it was crazy. Then right. the Lord took me from the cosmetic counter. He brought me to a to a retail store, to a clothing right. store, where I saw the same thing. And people would come in, and then people would be like, "Oh, this is what you do." And then I would go and I go out and I do the same thing. Now, this is this is where I kind of feel we're out. It's like okay, so we want to gather together because we have this model. Okay, so like on Crown Chats, we all gather together and the Lord There's nothing wrong with it. Right. And the Lord gives me something to sharpen. Yes. It's to sharpen. It's to get you ready so that when you leave here, you can go and you can break down everything that's been talked about. So that when the things come against you. And you start to see things in media and you're on different other places, Mm -hmm. and you can say, wait a second, that's not love. Because mm-hmm. I recognize love. That's not love. So therefore, that's not God. Because God is love. He does not contradict himself. He is love. Right. Love is love is love. Look at love. Okay. So this is condemnation. This is accusation. This is not of God. So now what do I do? Okay. So now I pull back again and I start to pray. Lord, what is what are you trying to say? Because anytime that God is going to move into a direction because everything starts in the spiritual realm. The enemy starts to move in the opposite direction. If we look at Moses, before Moses was born, what was the king doing? He was, ta- the Pharaoh was doing, he was taking all the children, the male children, because in the spiritual realm, somebody picked up that, it must, that, that somebody was coming, a deliverer was coming. And so they were killing all the children. They were drowning all the children in the river. Because what God took Moses and put him into the Nile River and sent him down and and infiltrated the palace because he was going to do something. So there is always going to be the counterfeit to what God is doing. And so when we're looking and we're seeing, okay, there's there's some people who are talking about this scenario, but then on this side, there's 
there's this scenario. Okay. And you're like, okay, well, how do I know? It's how do you know? Is that who do you know? Do you know God more or do you know the world more? Do you right. know how he thinks, how what his character is? And if you right. don't, you need to pull in and mm-hmm. spend time. You have, because this is the thing, when there is confusion, God is not a God of confusion. God so of if order. there is confusion, that's right, he's a God of order. So if there is confusion in the body, it's because there are mixed messages. Okay, go figure out what the mixture is. Go and sit down and start to spend time with the Lord and start to ask him, should I be paying attention to this? Do I need to be taking care of this? Is this a word from you? Do I need to be storing up? Do I need to be going out? What do I need to do? Because he's really good at telling you what to do. And if, if people are, if people are doing ministry correctly, ministry should should lead to him. Mm-hmm. All ministry should lead to him, not to me. It's not That's like right. I met Lisa and she ministered to me. And so now I'm going to keep coming back to Lisa because Lisa's going to do this and Lisa's going to, no, 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 no. My job as a minister is to say, no, 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 I'm not your source. So disconnect from me and reconnect to him. Right. You have to have that. Um that dependency on the Holy spirit, where at the end Absolutely. of the day, you know, God's going to use people all the time mm-hmm. to, to encourage you, help you direct you, I mean, or correct you. But at the end of the day, um, when I accepted Christ as savior at 11 years old, I spent a lifetime focusing on listening to his voice. Um, and, you know, I am not, You know, I have not spent a lifetime listening to man because man is always going to fail you. And as you can see, there's always going to be people that fail you, you know, so um, it's absolutely super critical, especially that the age that we're in and the time that we're in right now, as you can see over the last several years, well, actually over the last, you know, the last six years, I'll say the last six years since 2016, there's been such a focus on discredit and dishonor and injustice. Um, And that is a absolute symbolic manifestation of how the enemy has been trying diligently to discredit the body of Christ and dishonor the body of Christ, dishonor God, because we'll spend so much time, you know, what has taken place over the course of the last two years, Lisa, Mm -hmm. is reneging. Oh, okay. That's two years now of believers. Now, this is the this is the great the great dishonor that that goes after Holy Spirit, the great discredit dishonor that targets the enemy targets Christ is when Christians and ministries openly on public platforms, social media are always calling out each other. You're wrong. You missed it. That's exactly what the enemy wants. So the world can say, all you guys do is bicker and quarrel and you're divided and you don't know what to believe. And this guy's wrong. And that guy's wrong. You know, cause you don't, I was like, I said, I was talking with a friend yesterday. You don't ever see that in Islam. You don't see that on the public. You don't see that with Judaism. You don't see with any of the major religions of the world where they're quarreling with each other openly. Okay. They believe what they believe and that's it. And they stick to it. But we, the Christian church, we have mega, you know, mega ministries on social media for the world to see. This guy was wrong. He needs to apologize. That guy was wrong. He needs to apologize. This guy's right. And it's like we've literally separated ourselves and and the enemy is literally creating like a charade. It's almost like it's almost like a soap opera. What's coming tomorrow? You know, Victor Newman, what is he going to say tomorrow? You know? <laughs> That's so funny. It's like a show. It's like what comes tomorrow? Who's prophesying tomorrow? What is he going to say tomorrow? And it's like there's something wrong here. So the we've lost the credibility of honor and 
you you're not seeing the the wow that person is you can feel the presence of god on it mm -hmm. and you're not feeling that because back in the days of the old like i said the past revivalist a.a a. allen's the like the john g lakes the the like i said the the john you know jonathan you know um jonathan edwards and john wesley and all these people when they were preaching you know there was such fire that was coming there was such this reverence of god mm. and i really think we've lost it i really think we've literally lost where people have identified themselves with people and they haven't identified themselves with holy spirit and we literally have to get away from identifying ourselves with people or groups and here's another thing i'm just going to be very straight extremely straight i've seen over the course of the last several months into the year where ministries are now so caught up with their position and their title in their office that if you have to make sure you're letting people know what office you carry and what your title is. All right. You have a serious issue going on with self-worth affirmation. I need to be recognized because it is how many, I mean, now it's the apostolic prophetic movement. That's the major thing right now. Every, the apostolic this and the apostolic that, and this apostolic console and this apostolic conference. It is. And I'm like, guys, it doesn't work. It never did. To say it's maybe it'll work with your little little group that's so connected to you at the hip, and you know everything you say is like you know just as good as sliced bread. But I'm I'm going with Jesus. Yeah, I'm going with Holy Spirit, and okay. that's where I'm going. And I don't care if you follow me or not, but I want to make sure people that are connected to this ministry or follow this ministry that you better that I want to push you to Holy Spirit. I want to push you that you're codependent. Don't co be codependent on me. I'm just releasing what God's telling me to release. But at the end of the day, you still got to go to God and you still got to hear what God's saying to you. And you got to, if it bears witness with you, it bears witness with you. If it doesn't bear witness with you, then so be it. But I want to make sure that I'm pushing people to Jesus, not pulling people to me. And I want everyone to recognize that when it comes down to me, it's just John. At the end of the day, I want to be remembered as John. At the end of the day, I want you to just remember who, what my heart was. But I'm just a voice. I'm a nobody. See, we're all nobodies. We're just voices. But we've taken ownership of so much stuff. And we've taken, we've created this entire flagship, this identity of ministry. And it was never meant to be that way. Yeah, it was it was never meant to create this entire image of. It almost looks like a, it almost looks like an empire. You know, the AMC theater or the flagship cinemas, you know, whoever has who has the best chair and who has the best ministry and who has the, we've got how many schools do we need? How many of this? And that? we got so much. Let's just be the voice of God. Let's just make an impact in the world. Let's make an impact with the lost that one not one person would be lost and put more focus on people that are that are that need Jesus. Oh come on. Than people that already have him and know him. And at the end of the day, when I see him face to face, is he going to say to me, "John, you you know, you did what I told you to do. You the, the great commission. You know, you, you know what I came for, John, right? I didn't come for the the healthy. I came for the sick." That's right. He goes, so I don't want to spend a lifetime. I don't want to spend a lifetime helping people that are healthy get healthier. I don't want to do that. I want to be a person that directs, you know, prophets in the, in the past weren't in, in, they weren't just talking to the, to the, the church. They were the releasing the word of the Lord for the entire region who was in it. You know, it's not, they weren't just, Jesus, when he was in the church, he was not preaching to the choir. He was stirring the pot. You can't find it anywhere in the Bible 
where Jesus is in the church, let's just have a prayer session and let's just chill out and let's let's talk about the next wave that's coming. He didn't do that. He never did that. He he was he was he was he, the kid, this this man was in church at 12 years old in in the, in the temple, you know, changing things, shifting things. They were in awe of his knowledge because he was teaching people the right way because it was the wrong way and just causing a disturbance where people were on the edge of their seats and dear, my God, where's this coming from? You know, and like, I got to get out. I got to get, you know, and he, so we've lost that, Lisa. Mm. Well, we we've lost, lost our first it. love. We lost our first love. Yeah. Not, you know, when was the last time we were in church and you're sitting on the edge of your seat? Going, God, I haven't, I haven't heard this before. My mm -hmm. spirit's going to bust out of my chest. I want, I can't, you know, I mean, I mean, I've said this before so many times. If we knew that when we knew, if we knew when he was coming back, oh. if we knew he was coming back a week from now or a month from now, our entire perspective would change on everything we're doing. That's right. Well, well actually, everything's great. He's, we've got so much time until Johnny, you know, this guy leaves or a family member loses their life prematurely. Or this happens and, we, and time is going by so fast. Like I said, I've been serving God for 45 years. It feels like it was yesterday when I first heard his voice. Mm. And, and sometimes you, you're like, God, what am I really doing? <laughs> you know, I want, I want you know, it, it's, I'm just, I want to speak the truth. I want to see people get saved. I want, my, first, my first passion is seeing people get saved. Yep. Um. And everything that's going on, and I, I've taken so much heat. I've taken so much heat over the course of the last year and a half. Of oh, how come you don't? Most of your stuff is not about Trump anymore. Well, my stuff was not always about by Trump. If you follow the ministry correctly and you see it, mm -hmm. but I've released so much stuff. If I, I said this the other day on the Suzanne Hidden National Paracle, I said, if I've got to release prophetic words every day about Trump or about what's going on then basically I'm staying in a zone that's going to make people happy and content and, and direct them and support us and this and that. And that's not what God told me to do. And that's not what God told anybody to do. No. Because there's so many words already in the atmosphere that have been released about what's coming and what's not coming and what's going to come in 2022 at the end and what's coming to 2024. And I'm already confident of what I know is going to happen. Yeah. So I don't have to keep releasing or I don't have to keep reminding you what's coming because I already it's already been released. Mm -mm. So you've got to you you've got to have that confidence. Okay, God, you've already spoken. I hold on to your word. If you tell me to go, I go. If you if you tell me if if you tell me, John, you're you and your wife are going to live for you know you're going to be married for fifty years. That's my plan for you. You're going to be married fifty years. I'm not going to question him and say, uh, you know. Is it only 15? Is it 20? I'm not going to keep praying to him over and over and over again. Lord, uh, uh, just, you know, I hope it's 50. He said it. <laughs> and when he said it, it goes inside and I receive it. But it's my it's my confidence in who am I hearing? Come on. And that's the confidence you have to have in your walk with God. That do you believe great days are coming in 2022? Do you believe that things are going to shift in this, in this election that's taking place? I believe that. Do you believe that things are going to take place in 2024? Things are going to shift. I believe it. I believe a great shift because it's already started. Mm -hmm. You can already see it. There's already oh, been yeah. things that are going on. You can see how the enemy works. The, and the Lord actually uses the very things of the enemy to expose what's coming. Come on. And what took place over the course of the last week and a half, two weeks ago, while I was in Florida, is a perfect example of it. Right? When I was in Florida, it took place. Because that's a perfect example of the enemy is absolutely deathly afraid of what's coming. So I'm going to try to do something because the enemy's not all knowing. He's not omnipotent. Nope. But he knows a change is coming. So if they didn't know something was coming, they wouldn't have done what they did. That's right. So you, you, you don't sit back and say, oh, my God, what happened? Oh, we got it. I'm so afraid that, you know, oh, what's going to happen to him? Nothing. What's going to take place in 2024? Something absolutely amazing. What's coming? What's coming in 2022? Wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And you got to have that confidence. I don't need to release another word about the elections. I don't need to release another word about him. It's already out there. The puzzle, you know, sometimes, Lisa, when you put all the puzzle pieces in place, 
You should see the picture. But we come on, God. We as believers will put the whole puzzle piece out, and then we'll keep removing puzzle pieces again and take it out. Uh, maybe I put it in the wrong spot. I need to get the picture again. I need to be reminded again. But God already laid it out for you what's coming. Yep. So if you don't have the confidence and he already told you, if you don't have the confidence in that and you got to keep going to somebody, I need another word about what's coming in 2024. He already told you. <laughs> you just yep. got to hold on to it. Yep. Yeah. You got to hold on to it and believe it. I don't need another word because he's, he's already told me. Yep. It's when you don't really believe it is when you need another word. Oh, come on. That's a good word right there. That's a really You're good not word. convinced. You're not convinced. So we're going to go to a, we're going to go to someone else because I want your word to convince me. Mm. So basically is no man's word can convince you except the only way you're convinced is your relationship with Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And I'm just going to say that Gizmo's mom, she just put, she just put, don't undo the puzzle. It is done. I think that's a prophetic word. I don't think that she meant to write done, but I think that that's a prophetic <laughs> word. I'm just going to say, like, seriously, I think, I think that we just, after everything that you just shared, I think we just need to do a little kick and hold on. <laughs> I think we need to kick some religious cows. I'm just saying. I think we need to kick some religious cows. And you know what? Okay. So everything that, that you're saying, 100%, I am completely on board with. Because I, I said this yesterday. I said, when God says something to you, when he truly says something to you, he's going to do it. If he says it, he's going to do it. It's like sometimes there are things that we don't, we don't have to do anything to receive because we've heard it from the Lord. Okay. But there are things that we hear from other people that we have to, we have to question. We have to test the spirit in which they are prophesying. Right. We also have to see what do we have to come into agreement with? Because if we are receiving a word from a person, are we going to receive that? Are we going to entertain it? Are we going to start to steward it? It's a very, it's very different when the word comes from the Lord versus whether it comes from a person. And there are many, many people right. that will say, thus saith the Lord. And the Lord has not said thus, just saying, right. you know, because they say, if they say, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, blah, 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 blah. Okay. That's fantastic if it's from thus saith the Lord. But if it's not, now you got a bunch of people who are thinking that God is saying something that he's not saying. And so we right. have to be very, very careful because God watches over his words to see them perform. Right. And so there, there we have to be very careful. And I truly believe when you, when you said the great deception, <laughs> I don't know if you saw my face, John, when you said the great That's deception awesome. is upon us, I literally covered my mouth. Because back in June, the Lord said to me, because the great deception is upon you. Yeah. And he said that. And so he's been telling me things and he's been, he's been revealing certain things and certain truths because the great deception is upon you. Right. And, it, and he wasn't speaking. He wasn't saying that I was being deceived. Mm -mm. But he was saying that there is a deception that is coming. Yes. And so just like Jeremiah, because I was reading Jeremiah and all these prophets, these false prophets who were telling the people to do one thing. OK, then all of a sudden, Jeremiah is saying something completely different and he's weeping and he doesn't even want to say it. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is saying it is time for you to say it. So a word from the Lord has a weightiness to it. Right. People who really, truly are, are giving the word of God, they really don't want to put it out, to be quite, quite honest, because there is a weight to it. It's not just like this. There is a difference when you're when you're operating in the flow of just prophecy versus mm -hmm. when you're standing in the office of a prophet, because right. there's a weightiness to what you're saying. Right. <laughs> and so I believe that a lot of the words that are coming out um, are just people who are just prophesying. They're not standing in the office of a prophet. 
because you don't feel the weight. You don't feel the heaviness on it. You don't feel like you said, you don't feel the Lord. Like when you feel the Lord, you feel the Lord. It'll knock you to your knees. It'll right. put you to your face That's because right. he's about to do something. And so, you know, we're seeing all of these things that, that, you know, we're hearing different things like you and I, we talk off, off air. We talk cause we're friends. And so if I get something, it's like, I'm going to go to the people who I know can hear the voice of God. And I'm going to say, does this sound like God? Because when, when you, when you are truly stewarding the words of God, you have to steward them because you will be held accountable. And I think that we've forgotten the fear of the Lord. And that's what I believe is next. I believe yeah. the fear of the Lord is about to come upon the church like it hasn't in years. I think that the fear of the Lord is about to shake and shatter those pillars and those things. And when you are talking about like what we're supposed to do in church, church was never supposed to become a condo. The church was supposed to be more like a hostile. Like, you know how like the hostiles in the in Europe, you go in, yep. you stay for a couple of days, you get what you got to get done, and then you move on. Right. That's what it's supposed to be. It's, it's, it's supposed to be a train station. It's not supposed to be a hotel that you stay in forever. Right. And I think that what the Lord started to talk to me about is that, like you were saying, if if what we're trying to do is build ministries in face in, in social media, okay, you're going to vie for your place and you're going to try to maintain because why? You're getting income from it, you're getting notoriety from it, you're selling more books from it, mm -hmm. yada yada yada. That's but right. when God commissions <laughs> you to speak and to say things, you really don't care who's there. You just get on, you do what you got to do, say what you got to say and say, all right, sayonara. You're not, you're not thinking about how I can monetize this, how I can make this better. You're just going to do what God has called you to do. And I believe that that, mm -hmm. that purity of the pulpit is coming back. That's what I believe. I think there should be an urgency in the hour for the bride, for what's taking place in the world. I don't, I'm not seeing the urgency. Oh, come I'm on. not hearing the urgency. Um, we are living in it like days that are very interesting. Mm -hmm. These are the most peculiar days in our nation that we've seen since we, I believe, since I've been alive on a governmental level. Things that you never thought would happen, things that you never thought would take place or be implemented um, with deception and delusion and the scripture that absolutely is manifesting now they'll call good evil and evil good yep. uh, this is the highest level in yep. this nation they'll call evil good and good evil that is yep. manifesting that should be a actual precursor and, a, and a, an attention getter and red flag that we are living in days right now that it just can't be, oh, God's going to fix it and God's got this in control. Let me tell you something. Let, let me just tell you how you just contradicted yourself with that word. First of all, obviously God is in control, of course, but he also gives man free will and he doesn't violate it. That's so right. just to say that God's going to fix everything and God's going to this and God's going to that, that's not reality. Mm -mm. Show me in the Bible where that takes place. Mm -mm. Show me in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation where people that believed in God, God just made sure they were good. Mm -mm. Uh, you, you can't. Okay. Because he gives you a free will. He gives mm -hmm. you a directive. You have to make the choice to either be obedient and follow it or not follow it. If Come you on. don't follow it, there's a ramification for that disobedience. And then he'll mm -hmm. give you grace to get through that ramification. But there is no such thing as, it's everything's great. God's good. It's going to be awesome. God's going to fix this. God's going to, it's everything's going to be just fine. That's not reality. Yep. Ask some of the ministries that lost spouses and family members in the course of the last several months. Come on. Because... And everyone thought everything's great, everything's wonderful, everything's good. 
and they never had it on their radar. Okay, they never had it on their radar that, hey, listen, my family member is going to die this way. My family member is going to die that way. Or this, 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 this. Nobody knew that. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is we, we, and, but the, then all of a sudden we go back to the get out of jail free card mm -hmm. and we try to hand it in and say, you know, and God says, I, you know, there's no such thing as get, get out of jail free card. It's if you want to go down your own path and make your own decisions, you're going to deal with some stuff mm -hmm. and you're going to get, you're going to be given grace to get through your stuff. But at the end of the day, we've de programmed people to be codependent on Holy Spirit and we've created them to stay in the secret place mm -hmm. in that safety net. And that's why the whole purpose of why Jesus met Peter on the water. And it wasn't because Peter said, if it's you, bid me to come. That was the whole plan in the first place was to get out of the comfort zone because Peter is a perfect example of a minister that wants everything the way he thinks it should be. Come on. Okay. He's the perfect example of, I want to dictate things. I want to steward things. I want to run things. And I want all the puzzle pieces in place, how I think it should be done. Right up until the very end where Jesus, we're on the beach with John and Jesus is getting ready to exit for the very last time. Peter's still doing it. Mm. He wants to know what, how everything is in place in advance so it brings him comfort and, it, and affirms what he believes. And Jesus tells him right there, realistically in today's English, you haven't gotten anything yet, what I'm trying to tell mm. you. You don't get it. All right. That's what Jesus, and, and that's kind of interesting because Jesus is trying to get us out of our comfort zone, but we're trying to, we, we still try to stay in the comfort zone and let, I just want to be in that really wonderful, loving, happy, loving place that's so beautiful and so happy and so peaceful. And Jesus said, that's not what you're going to have in this world. Mm -mm. You are going to be in the world, not of it. You're going to, if they know you and they hate you, they better hate. If they hate me, they're going to hate you. Right. And if you want to be loved by everybody, then you're definitely not a threat by God and by the end. That's right. Because you're supposed to be a peculiar people. Yeah. A royal priesthood, but you know, and you're supposed to be in a place where people are looking at you with either definitely want what you have, or they think you're an absolute, you know what? Mm -hmm. And there's be this, you know, this, this resistance. Mm -hmm. But if you stay in the safety net of the believer and you're always just in that little place in that little secret hideaway all the time, then there's no threat to the enemy because you're not in that. You're, you're not really doing what God is telling you to do. You're you're. Remember what Jesus said to the disciples, you know, come pray with me. Yep. That was just a portion of their life. Yep. I look at it as a th thirds or, you know, or a four quarters of the pie. One quarter of the time you should be in the church. One quarter of the time. Hearing, encouraged, getting encouraged, you know, be, getting equipped, blah, 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 and everything else. But three quarters of the time, you better not be in that place. Mm -hmm. so if you're always, if that's just your place, if that's your place and that's your identity, then you so be it. The, enemy, the enemy's not concerned with you whatsoever. It's mm -hmm. when you're in his camp is when you're a threat. Come on. You're not a threat in that place. You were mm -hmm. never supposed to be a threat. The disciples weren't a threat, okay, in the upper room to anybody. The only, play, the only reason why they were in the upper room was because they were going to get killed or arrested if they weren't. <laughs> but then they, when they under the anointing, they went out and preached the gospel. That's right. But they went back into the upper room to get filled, equipped, encouraged to, to, to take a breather, all right, to, to reevaluate, to reassess. But 99% of the time they were out there banging it out. That's right. And being a light in a dark place. That's right. But we have polarized that and completely changed it where that's the place I go to most of the time. And that's wonderful. I can't wait to get there again. Well, listen, I can't wait to get there either. But my passion isn't there. Right. Half the time I don't even want to be there because it's that's not where I'm called to be. And that's not where anybody's called to be. 
No. You're called to, 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 to release the word of the Lord that literally shakes things. Mm, come on. And if it's not shaking things and it's not causing a disturbance in the spirit realm, whether it's the believers, unbelievers, then what are you releasing? <laughs> okay. Because most of the time, people, nobody wants the truth speakers, Lisa. I know. They don't want the truth speakers. And you know what? The truth speakers are a remnant. The body of the word of God says it's a remnant of people. You know, it's it's the truth that causes you to sit on the edge of your seat and say, like, come on, God, wow. Mm. You know, where it shakes you to the core and gives you the strength to get through next week and gives you the strength to get through the next onslaught what the enemy's going to bring. And it, it, you, come on, God. You know, and the price that you pay, and it's a war. It's a battle, man. It's a battle. Yep. So you get into that place and, okay, God, I'm going to, it's go time. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. That, that was so just, good. That was that was just too good to not have a boom. You had to have a boom. It just had to have a boom, John. I'm just saying. But everything that, look, everything that you're saying is saying the same thing that I'm hearing, which is, okay, stop sitting on your blessed assurance and get right. your butt out there. It's time for us to hit the streets. It's time for us to do more than just, look, okay, so I'm doing my conference. I'm doing Daddy's Girl, Meet Me at the Well. But why am I doing it? Well, number one, the Lord told me to do it. But what is it for? It's a gathering together to get everybody ready to go out. It's not to come back and recreate, you know, meet me at the well, you know, 17 billion times. Because each and every time it's going to be bringing people together to give them their arsenal so that they know who they are and know whose they are and know their purposes. Because that's what that's what the apostles are supposed to do. That's what the prophets are supposed to do. You know, the prophet Samuel, he called out David to be a king. He called out Saul to be a king. That's that's part of the job of a prophet is to call people out to do what you're called to do. Then you have the other prophet who call out a nation to be who they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. There are people who are prophets who are supposed to call out cities that are supposed to be. They call out the, the heads up. So like the politicians or the government to be who they're called to be. Right. Because everything is about coming into who you were aligned, who were you were created to be. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. It's yeah, we can sit there and sing kumbaya and, and and talk about like, you know, all these other things. But I, I was just saying yesterday, like, when when do we go to church? And when do we actually start to hear, okay, today we're gonna learn about spiritual warfare so that you are fully equipped to not only protect your family, but to start changing your community. Like, when was exactly. the last time we heard that? When was the last time that we that we heard, okay, today we're going to talk about how we're going to pray to get rid of sickness, how we're going to step into the authority that Jesus Christ gave us, and that it says that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Because that, I think that once we come- preached. Right? Has not been that's preached. not preached. That's not preached because no. it's like, oh, Lord, if it be your will. What? That is the big that is the biggest cop out. That is the biggest cop out that that pisses me off and I've seen it in churches where I sat there fuming. Fuming because they're like, well, this person this person died and so they finally got their healing. No, they didn't. They didn't right. get healed. They didn't get healed. Healing right. happens on earth. Healing happens on earth. There right. is no sickness in heaven. So to, to say that is a cop out. It's because people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. And I'm just as guilty. I'm just as guilty because when the Lord said that, that the, I was at this funeral and I kept waiting for this guy to wake up from, from the casket. I was waiting for him to be ra raised from the dead. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, why didn't that happen? And he said, because I told somebody to do it and they refused to do it. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh my gosh. So I was sharing it with a bunch of women. And I said exactly what I said, because we were talking about this individual because he was a member of our church. 
And the woman breaks down and starts crying. And I go, I'm sorry, what's the matter? And she goes, God told me. God told me to go and do it. But my husband told me not to, that I would make a, I would be embarrassing and it would be a scene. And so I didn't do it. But he specifically told her to do it. What has God told us to do? Make disciples. Send them out. Preach the good news. Expand the kingdom. Raise the, the dead. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. That's what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to be holding church services three, four times a week. That's become our social club. Right. Well, we, we were supposed to we were, we were supposed to be a model of the of the of the Bible. Come on. We were supposed to continue the work. Yep. And we changed it. Yep. Because it we don't you know a lot you know people do not want to deal with the warfare or the resistance or the rejection. So we Come just on. stay in that comfort place that won't you know dispense that on me won't release that on me. So. And we definitely don't want the the struggle and the stress of really being a light in a dark place because I don't want to be rejected. That's why, I mean, so many people that I've spoken to in my lifetime, even about telling people about Christ, they'll say, you know, I, I love this one. This is probably the, the greatest, probably the most absurd statements any person can ever make. When was the last time you... You know, when was the last time you led somebody to Christ? And the response was, I'm not called to do that. <laughs> like, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Then you basically, then you definitely don't know who Jesus is. Nope. Um, and you need to have a wake up call and basically who he is. Because um, letting somebody know about Jesus is not a calling, it's, it's a, a lifestyle. That's what we it's, did. A, it's a commissioning. It's a commissioning. So uh, then basically, what you just said was um, his, what he did on the cross. And the sacrifice that he paid for us and and what the disciples went through and the 99 percent of them being martyred for their faith um i guess they didn't have to go through that either mm. or they they paid a price in vain too so our entire commissioning and what jesus was called us to be was to be a light in a dark place mm. That's what he called us to be. Yes. That's what he called everybody to be. Everybody before the foundations of the world. You're called to be a light in a dark place. Mm-hmm. I came so the, re- re- the redemption of sins, the the, the 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 you know bringing freedom to the captives. If we if all we focus on is being a light in a light place, then we've literally convinced ourselves that God does not want us to be a light in a dark place. Oh, but, you know, once in a while, you know, you know, I met this person on the street and I told them about the love of God. All right. And you did that, you know, one time in the last 17 years. All right. But you all you are is a light in the light place. Um, I have a problem with that. And if you try to convince me that's what God called you to be. Um, well, he basically told the disciples what to do. Raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out devils. You know, um, and he made sure he he made sure that from the beginning of what he said in the very beginning of his ministry to the very end in that third year when he was getting ready to exit, he reminded them, "Come on, of what he did and what Come you're on. supposed to do." All right, just like the disciples on the mountaintop when Jesus was going to feed the four and five thousand, and what do they say? What does Peter? What does Peter say? Send them home. So we can basically, I just want to hang out with you. Mm-hmm. Send them on their merry way and let them deal with what they, they have to deal with. Let, let's just, I just want to be with you. And what does Jesus say? Why would I send these people home? They're weary. They're, they, they, this is what it was. This is what it's all about, Peter. And it's amazing that when they said, you know, what do you, you know, Jesus puts off the, the deflection on them and says, you know, Peter, you know, what do you have? What do you have? You know, they're just expecting Jesus to fix it all the time. And Jesus says, what do you have? And he wasn't asking them the question of what do you have naturally? Because what you have naturally can't fix nothing. Mm -hmm. It's what you have spiritually, Peter, 
do you get why I'm here? Do you even get why I told you to go across the lake, you know, and, and deal with the stuff that you were going to deal with and all you guys and the trauma and that, that warfare on the water. And you had no idea that when, when we got to the other side on the, on the mountaintop, there was going to be thousands of people waiting for me. Do you get it yet that this isn't about you just being comfortable and happy and just watching me do all the stuff I'm preparing you for what you're supposed to be doing. And, and it's not about just watching me preach in the synagogue. It's about being a doer. And because everything that I'm doing, you're supposed to be doing. That's and right. if you're not doing it and you're just see Jesus didn't come on, God, Jesus did. Basically, there was two things going on. He was either preaching in the synagogue, right? Shaking everyone at the core. Come on. Or he was healing the sick. People getting radically wrecked following him. OK, but you see, a lot of times the disciples just wanted to hang out in the synagogue because that's that's my happy place right there. I could just I'm going to weep all day for you. I just just keep moving, man. This is awesome. I'm going to just feel I'm, I'm so in love with you. That's where the comfort zone is. Let's just stay in that place. And, and then, then when they got out, because that's when they really had great faith. Oh, I'm in that happy place. I'm so fired up. I'm so good until I get in the turbulent place. And then it's like, don't you even care? I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. How many times did Peter tell Jesus, don't you even care? We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. Right to the point when he said, you're going to deny me three times. Yep. And what happens? Peter denied him three times. Why? Because he knew this was game over. That's right. If I tell them I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm getting arrested. More likely, I'm losing my That's head. That's right. Now. And I'm going to be dying. Come on. I don't yeah. want to die because I'm not, yeah. I don't, haven't gotten the full revelation that following you just might cause me to die. Mm -hmm. And so that's I what sure I'm good. I'm, everything's good. I'm good. Everything is safe. I don't want anything disrupted. And I want to make sure I stay in that synagogue because that's the place where I'm really not ruffling anybody's feathers. I'm really not stirring the pot. And this is going to be all good. Well, and that's where we are right now, 2022, August 23. Well, that's one of the things that I, I've been, um, that when, when the, Lord, the Lord started talking to me about Peter, he said, Peter had a fear of death. He feared death because even when, when they were on the banks and, and he saw John the Beloved laying on Jesus' shoulder and he looks at, at Jesus and goes, how come he doesn't have to die? How come he doesn't have to die? There was something right. inside of him that was so afraid of death. Yep. But when you become so, see the thing about that, John, and the Lord really spoke to me about John. John knew how much he was loved. So death couldn't touch him. Death right. could, not, could not touch him because he was so in love. He trusted, he knew how much he was loved. He understood the love because when you know how much you're loved, you know, you're protected. Look at Moses. Moses God. was friends with God that even when he died, that, that God sent the archangel Michael to go and retrieve his body. That's and right. there are so many things that, that we are missing in the Bible. The Bible is, is, if we really want to talk about what the Bible is, it's an instructional book to teach you how to go out and to understand why you do what you do so that you could go and do what you were called to do. We are called to be the, the changers, the shakers, the, the atmosphere shifters. We're supposed to walk into the room and if there is anything demonic, all eyes should be on us. Can I That's just say correct. that? And if they're not, if the debt, let, let me just tell you something. One of the things that the Lord showed me, he said, he said, um, the seven sons of Sceva. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they said, and then, and they said, you know, get out in the name of, uh, in the name of, uh, of Paul and in the name of Jesus. And they said, well, Paul, we know, and Jesus, we know, but you, we don't know. And yep. the, the, um, the uh, epiphany that I had was like, well, if demons don't know you, it probably is very true that Jesus don't know you, at least not in the way that you want to be known, because right. knowing is intimate. Right. When you know somebody, there's a difference is, oh, yeah, I know them. And then there's, oh, no, I really know them. Like, I'm friends with them. I could talk about them. I can understand 
But if you don't know somebody, you can't talk about them. You have to That's know right. somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, I have a friend of mine, Lisa, that really awesome ministry, really awesome ministry. And before the ministry expanded, he was actually working in the the marketplace in construction mm-hmm. and um, but still ministering mm-hmm. until it expanded so much we couldn't do it anymore. Right. And I remember one time he told me this story and he was he had to pick up this this young man every day and bring him to um, to the job site. And, you know, you could see that he had issues and he could see that he was struggling in life, really, really downcast, really just pressed hard. Mm-hmm. And every day he was bringing him, you know, and he would talk to him, but he wasn't really getting for some reason or another, the, the, just the gospel. This is crazy. Just telling him about Jesus. For some reason or another, he never gave him the gospel every day. You know, there's always like a distraction here, distraction there, yeah. but he always kept hearing the voice of the Lord, Holy spirit, telling him, tell him about me, tell him about me, tell him about me. He heard that every day. And this is a man of God. Mm-hmm. Until one time when the one day he had to go to the to the guy's house to pick him up to bring him to the job site, and he knocked on the door and the, and no one was answering the door, and he knocked on the door and no one was answering the door, and then he he knew he was supposed to pick him up that morning. I don't know what time it was, and next thing you know, he opened up the door and there he was dead on the floor, and he overdosed. And the Lord said, "I've been telling you to tell him about me." Oh man! Over and over and over again. Now this is a man of God, and how sometimes, Lisa, the Lord is. There's so many things right in front of us mm-hmm. that we are so we don't even see because we're so focused on or distracted and so intent on other things. Yep. That we don't see the very things that are in front. How about when you're walking in the Walmart? You're and you know, as, as a woman of God, you're a, you're a great woman of God. You know, your family, your husband, the people that you connected to, you know, we've been following the Lord for a long time. You know, when we go in the Walmart, are we sensing in our spirit the person that's down the aisle wants to commit suicide? Mm, come on, are we John. Sensing, are we, and are we sensing in the spirit that when we're shopping for clothes and this and that or cars and this and that or on the golf course, do we sense that the guy, you know, you know, in the, in the you know, on the hole in front of us, you know, maybe is thinking about ending his life or absolutely downcast or, or this or that, or maybe the person or, or filled with God knows how many demons. Mm. Well, when are we really sensitive to the, to the things that are happening in the atmosphere? When? Come on. Come on. But we're really, really focusing on, Oh Lord, fill me up, fill mm. me up, fill me up, fill me up. But the, the, the guy at the, at the shop, right. Or the Acme, um, is getting ready to, to to end it all, and he's on a collision course with hell. And I have, and there's no sensitivity to that whatsoever. But we're some crazy, awesome, prophetic, Holy Spirit filled people, and we've completely desensitized ourselves to what's happening in the outside world. Come on. Well, we got the word of the Lord for the believer. Come on. Okay. So when was the last time you were, you know, you're here or there and all of a sudden you, you know, the Lord told you do this, do this. And it's like, no, didn't happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. But yeah, I'm on, I got a word for my, you know, for my church or I got my word for the, you know, come on, man. Nope. Nope. There's your great deception. When your focus is 100% on the, on the body of Christ. 100%. That's why Jesus said, I did not come for the healthy, meaning that I did not come for people that know me or believe in me. Come on. I came for those that don't know me. Come on. And if you are and if you are convinced that you are only called to bring light to light, I need to know where you're finding that in the word of God. Come on. Come on. It's not there. Because nope. if Jesus didn't do it, you're not to do it. And I'm only doing what he does, what he tells me to say, and what he tells me to do. I am his voice piece. So everything that comes out of me is him. So if he said I'm called to, I was, I was sent for the sick, then why have we convinced ourselves just to stay in the light? 
Come on. Come on. And the reality is people don't want to hear the truth. Nope. And, and the problem is the remnant of people that speak truth like this, it, it causes an offense on people that are religious that present a form of godliness. Oh, hold one second, please. Kill me with that. <laughs> it's the best, isn't it? It really oh. is the best. It is the best. I love the clang it hits. <laughs> Clang. It's so good. It's the clang. Oh, it's, it is what it is. Well, this is a great time this morning. Oh my gosh, this really was so time. good. Oh, I always have so much fun with Thank you. you okay. Lisa. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. Okay. So, John, how about firing up everybody here? Why don't you go ahead and let's pray? Let's let's get let's get some sparks flying. Of, of let I'm going to use the word. Hold on a second. Hold on. I'm going to get the cow ready. But here okay. it goes. Let's let's kindle up that spirit of revival. Hold on. Yes. <laughs> but seriously, Lord, let's God. let's get louder, let's, louder, get people, let's get them let's get them thank fired you, up. Hallelujah. Yeah. Father, we just thank you, God, for this day. We ask you right now, Holy Spirit, to move mightily, God. We just break off the spirit of religion right now Come in the on. mighty name of Jesus. We speak the. we just break off the spirit of complacency, God, and lethargy, Lord. We ask you right now, Holy Spirit, to open up the eyes of the believer. Open up the eyes, God, of those that call you by your name, God, those that are in the ministry. Father, the, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the pastors, and evangelists. I just speak forth right now, God, those that are on this call, those that are on this on this, on this, uh, this show this morning, God, that there, there would just be such a, a, a move, a shaking, God, an urgency in the hour, God to be that light in the dark place. We speak forth right now, God, that any form of deception that the enemy has, yes. has released on the body of Christ, God, that, that would cause them to be complacent and to be in that happy place, God. That happy place, God, is when you are shaking and, and causing a great disturbance, God, in the atmosphere that manifests in the natural. We speak forth right now, God, in your mighty name, Jesus, Lord, just create havoc in the spirit realm right now. Create havoc, God. Cause us to rise up and not fear anything, God. Cause the Lord, as, J as David ran to Goliath, God, without any fear, a teenager running to a to a giant without any fear, any father, any reservation, Lord, Lord, and cause an urgency to be placed in the hearts of men and women like alike, God, an urgency in this hour, God, that there would father that that you said that not one would be lost, God, an urgency in the hour that that, that time is of the essence, God, we would not take any time for granted and have not have any regrets, God. Any regrets, but Father, just to know who we are in Christ, to know what we're called to be, to know what we're called to do, Lord, and release the fire of God, release the fire of God, and not be afraid to be that peculiar people, not desiring just to be accepted, not desiring to fit in, but to be that voice, that voice in the wilderness, God. We speak that right now over everyone right now today in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen amen this was awesome this was so awesome okay so if you guys want to find out uh, follow john natalie you can go to his website which is john natalie dot wpcomstaging.com so you can go over to his website i think now john are you working on a book john um, I'm getting ready to, to 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 do a journal that's the one thing i want to do now with the prophetic journal okay because yeah. i i just saw a book and i'm like oh because I'm like, I didn't hear you talk about a book, but but I just yeah, saw Yeah, there's a prophetic journal that I want to put together. All the prophetic words that I've re-released, oh, there's thousands of them that, that people can just... Uh, I was given a book years and years and years ago called the the, 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 um, the Journal of the Unknown Prophet. Oh, come and, on. Uh, pretty amazing book. But all of the things that we've released uh, is... I just want to be an encouragement to the body of Christ, but also sure. an individual that directs you to Christ. Um, Absolutely. But the most important thing about my life is um, is just my where I've come from and everything that I've that I've experienced um, to push people to be who they are, to push people um, to 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 be a voice. Yeah. And to know that Jesus said, if you if they love me, they'll love you. If they hate me, they'll hate you. The, the, there has to be the tipping point, Lisa. Mm hmm that I, I, you, you're going to get pushed to one side or the other. 
That's it. So I just, you know, it, it's just pushing people to be who they are. So, uh, and just being as real and genuine as possible. That's well, the most that important is, thing. Well, that is definitely who you are. So, and we will have you back. Thanks, Lisa. We will definitely have you back. I will see you in a bit. So, You're um, such a blessing. <laughs> so are you, John. Thank you so much for today's word. It was awesome. Okay, guys, I just wanted before. I wrapped this up. I wanted to just pray because I saw a couple of things that needed some prayer. I wanted to pray for Joella because um, I got a message. So we're going to pray for for her um, for her daughter in law, Marissa. And so if you guys can start just praying, if you guys pray in the spirit, let's pray in the spirit. But let's just start asking the Lord. So we'll ask you, Father. We just lift up. We just lift up Marissa to you, Lord. And we just thank you, Papa. We thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, John, if you see anything and you want to come back on, just raise your hand. But uh, we're going to do some healing if you'd like. So, um, because I see you're still on. But Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Papa that you are doing this work, that you are just, we just speak to that tumor. We just tell that tumor that we just, we cut you off. We just cut off your blood supply and we tell you to start to shrink and dissolve in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that your hand is upon her family. We thank you, Father, that you are going to move in Joella's family like never before. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the suddenlies, the suddenlies, the suddenlies, the suddenlies over Joella and her family. We thank Thank you, Father, for the protection, and we thank you for wisdom. We thank you even for doctors who who are willing to who are willing just to um, to do things differently that they're going to do things differently. And I thank you, Papa, for the things that you are doing. I thank you that you are opening up these new ways and this new conversation. I thank you, Father, that as they join around in a circle and that everybody starts laying hands on Marissa, and that your power is going to be felt, even the children as they put their hands on their mama, that there is going to be a there is going to be something, there is going to be something that is felt. And we thank you, Father, that there is this is the the season of, of the suddenlies, the suddenlies, the suddenlies. And I thank you, Papa, that you are doing a new thing, that you are doing a new thing, that you're not using the um, the, the I'm just you're using your children, you're using your children, and we thank you, Father. We thank you for what you are doing. And we thank you that, uh, that you are removing that tumor. We thank you, Father. We thank you that through our words that we have the power. We thank you, Father, that you hear us, that you hear our words, that you hear the things that we say, Lord. And so we stand, we stand in the gap. Um, for Marissa, we stand in the gap, Lord. We thank you for the things that you are doing. We thank you for a good report. 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 And we thank you for what you were doing. We ask you, Father, just to, to, to cover and hover. Holy Spirit, come and hover and cover her family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you that this tumor is going to disappear. We thank you that there is no cancer in her. We thank you that it is shrinking and dissolving even as we speak. We speak to those migraines and we tell them to go. You have no place. We thank you, Papa, for what you are doing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that we have the authority because of what you have done, Jesus Christ. And it says that we shall lay hands on the sick and that they shall be healed. And so, Lord, we just thank you as we place our hands in the spiritual realm over Marissa, over Joella, over the family. We thank you that there is healing that is going forth. We thank you for the healing that is going forth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we decree and declare, we decree and declare healing, shrinking. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that this is going to turn. Whoo. Whoa. Okay, Joel, I don't know where this tumor is, but I felt something here. I felt something right here. Okay, so it's on my... It's on my left side, but it's like right, like in the middle. I don't know. This is where I just felt something. So, woof. And I feel like um, um, the the pain goes behind her um, behind her head. 
Yeah. Or behind her eye. I feel like it's behind her eye. So thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Papa. I thought I saw Joel in the thing. So just let her know that we prayed. So, but that's what I just felt after we prayed. I felt that. So, and so Lord, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. 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 And Lord, we just lift up Gizmo. Little Gizmo. We just lift him up, Lord. We just speak to his to his lungs and we just say, be filled with the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Papa, that Teresa has the authority over her pet. And we thank you. And we stand in agreement with Teresa as she puts her hands on her puppy. That we thank you that there is a shift and a change that is happening. We thank you, Father God, even for Tara, that as her husband with his back pain, that Lord, that you give him a touch that, okay, okay, Joella, we're here for you. Okay. So, and let her listen to it. Let her listen to it. And um, have the, what I saw is I saw all of you coming around her, all of you coming around her <clears throat> and just putting your hands on her, putting her hands on her and telling that thing to shrivel up and die. Okay. That tumor to shrivel up and die. The tumor to shrivel up and die. We have to speak to the things Jesus spoke to the fig tree and he cursed it at its root. Cursing, blessings and cursings are in the power of our tongue. Curse that tumor. Curse that tumor. I'm just saying, curse that tumor. Tell it to go. Tell it to go in Jesus' name. Children have children have a power and an authority that we don't even understand. Have them lay their hands on their mama's head and tell them to tell that tumor to shrink and to dissolve and to go away. So there you go. But we have you, we have your back. And uh, it was that, was it on, was it on her left side or is it on her right side? But is it like in the front behind her eyes? Is it her, is it behind her eyes? So I'm not quite sure, but all of a sudden I got it on my left side. So I got it on my left side. So um, right behind like my eye, like kind of like, like in the soft spot, like right above, right above the, um, that ear. If you go up from the ear, well, my ear, <laughs> it's, it's like, right. It's like right there. That's where, that's where I felt something. Blah. Excuse me. Blah. Blech. All right, something left. I don't know what left, but blah. That was nasty. So, yeah. So, I don't know. Um, yeah, we command that tumor in the name of Jesus. It's uprooted from the seed and cast into the pit. Yep, where it came from. Yep. And we speak health over her. We speak health. And we speak um, longevity, long life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you are doing. Lord, we thank you um, for, for a touch for Tara's husband. We thank you for a touch that he starts to see, that he starts to see the miracle working power that you gave us. It's a right temple. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, sometimes I get, I get a little confused. <laughs> so I'm just saying. Um, I felt it on my, on my lap. Oh, so it is like the temple. Okay. That's where I, that's where I had it was in the temple. So that's good. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. So if I'm a little backwards, sometimes I'm seeing things opposite mirrored, if that makes sense, that happens sometimes, but yeah, but that's what I, that's what I, I, I saw. And so, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for, for everything that you're doing here on Crown Chats. We ask you, Father God, just to make this a place and a space to grow us and send us out. Lord, let none of us sit on our blessed assurances, but let us be the movers and the shakers, the atmosphere shifters. Let us be the... Um, the ones who bring the light into the dark places. Help us to be the bright and shiny ones. Help us to go out and move things that need to be moved, to speak to the mountains and cast them into the sea. We thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing. I had pressure in my right eye when you said you felt something. Cool. Okay. All right. So we got confirmation. So Lord, we just thank you for everything that you're doing. Lord, I ask you to, um, oh, you got me too. Wait, hold on. 
All right. Uh, me too. That's why I'm not positive if it's left or right. It doesn't matter. But we we both got it in our temple and behind our eyes. So that's a good thing. So there you go. And so, Lord, we just thank you. And Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the honor that this is not something that that is done by our hands, but by your hands, because you are the great physician. And so, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that we are going to see some of the greatest miracles that we've ever seen before, Lord, that this was just the beginning of the things and the testimonies that are going to come forth on Crown Chats and, and in, in the ministry. We thank you, Father God, that as people move out, that each and every one of them has been called into ministry, that you have called them into the places and the spaces where they have influence. We thank you, Father God, that as they speak a word, that it will not return void. We thank you, Father God, for everything that you are doing. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you the glory. We give you the glory. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are doing a new thing. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that everything has to bow at your name. It has to bow at your name. We thank you for the great turnaround. We thank you that this is going to be different, that this is not going to be like people have said, that this is going to be different. And so, Lord, we just thank you for everything in Jesus' mighty name. And we just, I just bless each and every person here on the broadcast. And I thank them, Lord, um, for coming. Lord, bless them in every place that they go. Bless them in their on their properties, bless them on their homes, bless them in uh, their relationships, bless their children, their children's children and their children to come, bless their health, bless their finances, bless their workplace and every place that they put their feet, bless our president, bless the military, bless our EMTs and our firemen and our police officers, bless our doctors and our nurses, bless our politicians who are still fighting for liberty and for truth and for freedom, bless righteous judges. His Lord. We thank you for the overturning of the unrighteousness. We ask you to come and bless our United States of America. We thank you for everything that you are doing. We say bless America, bless America, bless America. I speak blessings from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I speak blessings from sea to shining sea. I speak blessings in finances. I speak blessings in food. I speak blessings in our health. I speak blessings in every place that we go. And we thank you we thank you for what you are doing. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom be expanded. This is not a place of sitting anymore, but it's a place of moving and going out. And so, Lord, where Isaiah has said, who will go? Here I am. Send me. We say, here we are. Send us. And so, Lord, we just thank you for everything. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay. I got a busy day. I got to go. So I will see you guys. Um, I will see you guys tonight. Tonight I have um, I have Anthony Turner. You do not want to miss Anthony Turner. So I'm also doing an interview with him this afternoon where he's interviewing me. So I'll make sure that I share it on my socials so you can catch up. Please keep me in prayer. Please keep my family in prayer. Thank you guys for everything. I'll see you later, especially tonight. Hi, Slide Park. Love you. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Go out. No more sitting. Go out. Go out. Bye.